With the advancement of science and technology, there are many life-saving treatments around. Welcome to the Science of Things. I'm Paul Foster and today I'll explore two medical treatments that are available in our hospitals. Wondering what they are? Well, here's some clues. And let's see if you got them right. Science is all around us. From engineering marvels, to cutting edge technology, and innovative systems. Join me, Paul Foster, as I explore the country looking for everyday people working with extraordinary science. Hardworking men and women who make the science of things useful for the rest of us. Robots have taken over the world in the movies. In reality, that's not quite the case. But they are definitely making their presence felt in healthcare. In fact, surgeons operating out of the National University Hospital using robots is a norm. It's a little too mission impossible for me, but I'm still going to go in and give it a shot. <laughs> Today, I meet Dr. Joseph Ng, one of the surgeons in Singapore trained to perform robotic surgery. Dr. Ng, who has been a doctor for 18 years, admitted it was stressful the first time he used it on a patient. I won't lie, anytime we're doing, we're doing a new procedure, uh, it's always a little stressful. A lot of planning goes into it. Yeah, so a lot of training, a lot of dry runs before we did that first procedure. One such patient that he has performed the surgery on is Madame Noraini Abdullah. The 37-year-old accounts executive was diagnosed with cervix cancer in April 2016. I feel very blank. I feel, uh, I don't know how to feel um, because this is something uh, new, uh, something uh, high risk. Just take it one at a time. Dr. Ng has been involved since the surgery was launched in 2008. Hi, Doc. Hey, Paul. Welcome to the ASTC. Thank you very much. We're going to step right through here to the Smart Lab. Ooh, smart Lab. After I, you. I feel more intelligent already. You are. <laughs> so where we're at in the physical space mm -hmm. is the Advanced Surgery Training Center mm -hmm. at the National University Hospital. Mm -hmm. So this is where we do all our surgery training from very, very basic to very advanced. Uh, so all the courses that are run here um, help train surgeons. Yep. So we're here today to explore a little bit more about robotic surgery. I love how you say basic. Nothing looks basic to me here. <laughs> Uh, it, a lot of cool stuff going on. Dr. Ng walked me through to give a better understanding of the system. First up, the control center. This is where the surgeon sits and, and conducts the entire surgery. We'll start with vision. Uh, the surgeon actually has a two goggle-like vision ports, okay? And the, the reason it's designed this way is because what the left eye and what the right eye are seeing are different. The camera head on the scope has two separate cameras, making it look bigger than a traditional keyhole camera, where only one camera is used. So what you're saying is when you're actually doing the surgery, you can use both eyes or clothes? Oh, abso you, you, yeah? Absolutely. Oh, so what that. you actually get, what the surgeon actually gets is a three, uh, 3D field of view in high definition, in 1080p, high, full, full, full high definition. Yeah, it's pretty high definition. Yeah. I can see it from here. It's crystal clear. We have the foot pedals, yeah. so we have a pedal on the left that controls the camera, mm -hmm. so when the, when the surgeon presses on that pedal and moves his hands, that moves the scope. There are also color pedals that are also known as the energy pedals. These pedals provide different levels of energy depending on the need of the surgery. After showing me the control center, Dr. Ng showed me the arms and instruments of the robot and what it can do. We have a three-arm setup right here mm -hmm. where you have one arm that, that controls the camera because the surgeon has to see. And then the other two arms are instruments controlled by the, patient, uh, the surgeon's left and right hands. Okay, and um, we can also set up the system for a three-instrument arm where the surgeon controls three instruments at once. Okay. While all these robotics is great, is it really better than a surgeon's own hands? 
when recommended robotic surgery, Madame Noraini had little qualms about undergoing the procedure. I'm very delightful. Uh, it's very thankful that there is no need to go for the open surgery. Uh, it's very painful and uh, uh, for the robotic because previously my uh, other operation I also go for keyhole so I know it's very fast healing process uh, yeah that's why I got no worries about robotic surgery you can also have scaling that's um, three to one meaning that the surgeon's hands will move three centimeters and the instrument will only move one centimeter and that's great for really fine work especially for, for repairing vessels or nerves where you don't want a lot of big movements, you want those instruments to move very, very finely and move small distances. With the tremors in human hands, there is a chance of tearing a tissue. But with robots, due to the precise movements, there is only one-tenth chance of blood loss as compared to open surgery. Robotic surgery has its benefits over keyhole surgery. Comparing to the keyhole surgery, the wrists of the robotic surgery machine enable a greater range of movements. The equipment for keyhole surgery can only go straight. This causes limited access for the surgeon to perform the surgery. Meanwhile, robotic surgery gives better dexterity, precision and accessibility, especially in tight spaces. After Dr. Ng gave me a crash course of how to operate the machine, it was my turn to give it a go. Hey, Paul, you're up. <laughs> okay, my turn. Your, your turn in the driver's seat. Uh, no expectations, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> None at all. Okay, yeah. move in. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Well, I do this first, That's right? That's right. The point is incredibly high because the instruments are very small. All that force is uh, distributed over a very, very small surface area. You just move your hands normally and the robot will just do exactly the same thing. And, the, and all this technology translates their skills and the way they do that. Very, very complicated procedures without actually putting our hands in the patients. Follow through. It's just like golf. Cool. That's good. Shoulder repair. So, yeah, go. I, yeah, I self, self shoulder repair myself. When I was actually there trying the actual uh, machine, and, and, and it took me a moment, it took me a moment to get used to it, but it is literally as you would be doing it if you had you know, the instruments in your hand and, and you were going through the procedure itself. The key word I've been learning about this whole uh, experience is finesse. Uh, that's the one thing I probably didn't have yet, but uh, I will leave on a positive note with the doc saying, considering I have no experience with surgery whatsoever, and I went in and, and, and tried a little scenario there, I did okay. Since 2008, Dr. Joseph Ng and other surgeons at the National University Hospital have been performing robotic surgery on their patients. But like any other procedures, there are still risks involved. The risks of robotic surgery are just the uh, same risks as those for traditional open surgery, which is bleeding and infection. But because we're using, uh, because of the way the, the, the surgery is performed, as I mentioned, the lower blood loss and the lack of an open incision really lowers that, those risks significantly. So I think the biggest risk for, for doing robotic surgery uh, would be system failure. But because of the way the system is engineered, okay, that hasn't happened to us yet. If uh, robotic surgery becomes complicated or we have an instrument failure, for example, we can always quit that surgery and then revert back to what we were doing before, which is open surgery. Dr. Ng shared that the fast healing time is one of the bigger benefits, especially for cases where surgery is often the treatment. If they're able to have that surgery in a low impact fashion, then they can keep functioning with minimal downtime. At open surgery, our patients would be home four to seven days, so they would be in hospital for four to seven days, up to seven days or more. Uh, healing from that wound, okay. Uh, when we started, when we started robotic surgery. Our patients would go home the next day, so they would overnight in the hospital. And uh, increasingly, over the years, we've found that a lot of patients don't actually need that overnight stay. For Madame Noraini, it was still a pleasant surprise to find that she could have her surgery and be home the very same day. Of course, there is a pain, but it's very minimal, bearable pain. Um, 
after the surgery, I went for the surgery at the 8.45 a.m. Uh, I go back home on the same day at 10.30. Robotic surgery could relieve the bed crunch problems affecting hospitals, freeing up beds for patients with more critical conditions like stroke. It certainly helped us be more efficient in terms of uh, inpatient uh, hospital bed use. And we've pushed, constantly pushed that boundary uh, to, to the point where we can safely say, you know, send a patient who's had a hysterectomy, removal of the womb, uh, home the same day. And um, our, our patients are happy for it, believe me. And although costs may be higher, hospitals like NUH continuously aim to make it accessible to all. There is a concern for the cost because it's much more higher than the open, uh, open surgery. But uh, no doubt there is also some subsidies on this robotic surgery if you are very uh, eligible to it. Everybody can go for robotic surgery uh, because it's very painless. But of course, if you say you, you worry about the cost, uh, open surgery is much more lower cost. Of course, everybody can go through this uh, robotic surgery, no need to worry. It's very safe. When we started this program in NUH, one of the, um, one of the requirements for, for a program in, in a restructured hospital was if we started a new program, it needed to be accessible to our customer base. 